43. Welcome to the chapter 7 bonus deep dive. I would recommend reading through this problem before you start this video. Try and figure out what's the variable, what's the population distribution, what are they asking us for, things like that. But once you've done that, hop back into this video and, and we're going to get going. So the first thing I see here is that I'm, I'm looking at the age of cars. All right, so there's my variable. I get the phrase that it's uniformly distributed. And they say six months to nine and a half years, but I want the units to stay consistent. So I'm gonna go half a year to nine and a half years, which before I even get going, that means my variable here, right? My variable is the age of cars. That's a continuous numerical variable. Its units are in years. And they've told me for my population distribution, it's uniform, meaning it would look like a rectangle if I graphed it. And I'm going from half a year to 9.5 years. So again, I, I'm not going to graph my pop. Well, I guess actually I am. I'm going to graph my population distribution. It would have been a rectangle, right? We would have gone from 0.5 to 9.5. This would have been age in years down here, right? The age of cars. And then because that range is nine, this would be one ninth over here. And if you're wondering where I'm got, getting the nine, again, if I look at the range, it's always high minus low. All right. And so in this case, that would be 9.5 minus 0.5, and that would get me nine years. And whenever you're dealing with a uniform variable, the height is always the reciprocal of that. Okay. So that's just, again, I, I want to stress, this is just on the population level. All right. This was... This was a setup from a chapter five type problem. And now we're going to move on from there. We're going to say, hey, we're going to survey one of the lots. And then we're going to look at this sample of 32 cars. And then we're going to look at the average age of those 32 cars. So once we get a sample involved, we're going to move over to a sampling distribution. All right. And so the rules for sampling distributions, if you look at that trait table, and that trait table I'm talking about is where I list out all of the distributions and the means, the standard deviations, how you calculate probabilities. But the sampling distribution for means is hopefully the shape is approximately normal. You take the mean from your population distribution, that stays the same, but you take the standard deviation from your population distribution and divide it by the square root of n, right? And this again is the sampling distribution. And that's the chapter seven type problem. So let me put here, this was the population distribution. This was chapter five. And when you move up to samples, you're looking at a sampling distribution and we're in mainland. We have a numerical variable. So that's the sampling distribution. Okay, so what we need to figure out is I need the population mean and the population standard deviation. I already know that my sample size is 32. So let's find the mean and standard deviation. And you might be thinking, well, how do I do that? I'm gonna do that work up here. We have formulas for that. So we have that the formula for a uniform distribution, the mean is a plus b over two, and we have the standard deviation formula is b minus a squared over 12. Well, a and b are always the low and the high. So in this case, that's gonna be 0.5 plus 9.5 over two. And this is going to be the square root of 9.5 minus 0.5 squared over 12. And when I crunch these numbers, I'm going to get 5 and 2.598. All right. And technically, the units on these are years. Any statistic or parameter has the same units as your variable. Okay, so where is that leaving us? I'm going to take these two numbers, and let me change highlighter colors just so we can see. I'm going to take the 5 and the 2.598, I'm gonna put them five for the mean and 2.598 here. And because I'm running out of room, I'm gonna sketch that in here. So X bar, I'm gonna leave a little question mark. We haven't talked about shape yet, but the mean is five, and then the standard error would be 2.598 over the square root of 32. And if you crunch that number, you're gonna get about 0.459. Now, I left this as a question mark because we need to assess, hey, is the sampling distribution normal, right? Do I get to put this N here? We want that N because then we can use normal CDF and inverse norm. So one of the ways to get normality in mean land is if the population distribution is normally distributed. But if you look at the population, it was uniformly distributed. So that, cent or that part of the sampling distribution being normal, I, I don't get it that way, which is fine. 
There's a second option in mainland. Your second option is that your sample size has to be larger than 30. And if we look, we've got 32 right here. So since that is larger than 30, I can go ahead and drop the N on my sampling distribution. I know its shape is the bell curve, and that's why you're seeing a bell curve here, because the central limit theorem kicked in. If I wanted to start to sketch this, even though I haven't really read it, the problem out loud yet, I know I would have the average on the x-axis, x-bar I should say, on the x-axis, probability on the y, and then if I want to label, right, I know this would be the average age of cars, right, oops, and then I would have years for my units, right, I would have five under the peak, and then I would deviate out with, oops, that's shaking. I would deviate out with 0.459. I would add 0.459 three times and subtract it three times, and I could scale out my accept bar axis. All right, with all of that, let's look at part A. So what are some buzzwords here? I see calculate a probability. I see calculate the probability that the average age of the cars is at most four and a half years old. So let's take that sentence and turn it into a probability statement. So I will have capital P with some stuff in parentheses. A lot of times the format is letter, symbol, number. Sometimes it's a letter wedged between two numbers, but in this case it isn't. So let's finish that probability statement. Because I see the word average, I'm going to put X bar here rather than X. Because I see at most, that is synonymous with less than or equal to, less than or equal to, excuse me. And then I see my bound of 4.5. All right, so once I have that, because my distribution is normal, I get to use normal CDF. That's how we calculate probabilities. And it's always the same format, low, high, mean, oh, I'm gonna run out of room, standard deviation. So in this case, I'm gonna go normal CDF. And let's think about where 4.5 would be. It's gonna be below the mean, let me change colors here. And it's gonna be somewhere around here. All right, if the standard error is about, it's, it's about half a year, right? It's 0.46 years, and I'm going about half a year below average. It's somewhere around here. So let me get that, and then I want to shade the area to the left of that because we're going less than an equal to. So somewhere in there. So just taking a look at what I've shaded, it's not a huge proportion, right? If I just want to eyeball this, this looks like it's about 20% to me. It's definitely less than 50%, so when I crunch this number over here, I should get a decimal less than 50%. So let's do this. If I want to go normal CDF, in terms of the x-axis, or technically x-bar axis, right, I want to go from 4.5 all the way down, right? So that's negative infinity is my low, 4.5 is my high, so I'm going to go and fill that in. So I'll go normal CDF, negative 1E99, 4.5. I know the mean is 5, and I know the standard error is 0.459. All right, and when I go crunch that number on my calculator, I get 14%. Right? And that 14%, that that's in line with my approximation, right? I was just eyeballing it with the about 20%, so I'm pretty happy with the 14% coming back out. All right, if we look at B, B's asking us a different question, saying, hey, what's the 85th percentile? And this, again, for the average age of cars. So I'm still looking at my sampling distribution, right? And we found all of this out for part A. It's still going to apply in part B. So let me go ahead and start labeling things. All right, we've got a 5 under here. And I want the 85th percentile. All right, so the 85th percentile is going to be pretty close to a z-score of 1. because The z-score of 1 is the 86th, oh, excuse me, 84th percentile. But if I want the 85th, let me just shade this in. I want to find the age of cars that is this cutoff for the 85th percentile. Let me write this in here, 85%. And I want to know what, what is this number? All right, I, I, my guess, just looking at it, is it's about five and a half. That would be my guess. It's about one standard deviation above average. And again, if we want to start labeling this, this would still be average age of cars. And the units are years. Okay, but again, if you go to your trade table, if you ever want a percentile, 
there's an inverse norm calculation for that. So I'll do inverse norm, and then you need three things. You need the percentile itself, you need the mean, and you need the standard deviation. All right, or in this case, because we're on a sampling distribution, we would call it the sampling error. So let me go ahead and replace all of these with our particular numbers. So we would have 0.85, oops, that's not how you write 85, 0.85. Our mean was 5, and our standard error was 0.459. So when I crunch this number on my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and get 5.48. All right, and that's about what I guess. I said I, I was guessing this was about 5.5, and if you round, it would be 5.5. All right, and I always say include proper units because this is a value of your variable. So this should be years. All right. Okay, so the, the next question is saying, hey, how would your answers for part A and B change if the sample size had been 50? All right, so if the sample size had been 50, let's think about our sampling distribution, right? I would say that I still have this stuff, and I'm going to put a question mark there, and I, when I say there, I'm going to highlight it, because I want to talk about, hey, could I still put the, the normal, the capital N there? All right, so if this was 50, this would be different, and this would literally be 50 instead of 32. This number is going to stay the same. That number does not change. That was 2.598. That was from the population distribution. That does not get affected by sample size because that's not dealing with the sampling distribution. This would still be 5. All right. And then the big question would be, hey, can I put the N there? And if your sample size is 50, that is higher than 30. So I still could put the N here. So what that's telling me is that my sampling distribution, it would be normally distributed. I would put a 5 here, and I would put 2.598 over the square root of 50 rather than 32. And that would be a smaller number because anytime you increase sample size, you reduce variability. All right, so that would change. And how that would affect the rest of my answers, let me go ahead and highlight this. Because this was 0.367, you can imagine I would have a 0.367 there, and I would have a 0.367 there. So my answers would change, but the, the cool thing to take away is that I could still put the N here, all right? And that's because my sample size was 30 or higher. When it's lower than 30, then you can't put that in there and you can't use normal CDF, all right? 